Hi, welcome, this is In this video we will talk about the special USB stick, the USB killer stick. USB sticks or thumb drives are practical devices for sharing files, but they can be dangerous as well. Most people will plug any USB stick they are given into their computer without asking questions. They simply have no idea of the risks they are taking. First of all, a USB stick may be contaminated by a computer virus. If automatic execution of removable media is activated on your computer, plugging in a contaminated thumb drive can get you into a lot of trouble. Disabling automatic execution is not enough, as opening a contaminated file on the thumb drive may cause a lot of harm too. Antivirus software can protect you against contaminated USB pen drives, but antivirus software does not protect you against another kind of malicious thumb drives, the so-called USB killer sticks. A USB killer stick looks like a normal USB stick, but instead of containing files and computer viruses, it contains malicious electronic circuitry. A USB killer stick tries to destroy the USB port or even the computer it is plugged into by injecting high voltages. If the host device is not protected well enough, damage may even extend beyond the USB port, rendering it partly useless or even turning it into landfill. Now this may sound like science fiction or a hoax, but is it? There exists a company that tries to make a living from a product named USB Kill. According to their website, their product is a hardware stress tester sold to security companies, computer manufacturers and other penetration testers. USB Kill is a dangerous product, but as it is clearly marked as being a USB killer device, we may hope that people will be careful with it. Much more dangerous, however, are the unmarked killer sticks that you can buy online. I got this one from Amazon. It looks like any other thumb drive I have, only its color is different. I do not have other yellow thumb drives. So let's find out how dangerous this stick is. I built this little test rig so I could easily connect test equipment to the killer stick's pins. It is basically a USB-A breakout board. Like any other thumb drive, the killer stick needs a 5V DC power supply to work. The two data pins are the dangerous pins. After connecting an oscilloscope to one of them with a 10 to 1 probe, I obtain this strange signal. Its amplitude is more than 200 volts and it never stops. If you touch one of the data lines, you can feel a light stinging. An oscilloscope presents a rather light load and what we see looks a lot like ringing. Since the killer stick is supposed to destroy the USB port it is plugged into, we may expect it to be capable of delivering some power. When I put a 1 kilo ohm resistor between the data line and 0 volts, the signal becomes a well defined pulse with a duration of 100 microseconds. The repetition rate is 500 Hz in 50 millisecond bursts. The resistor, a 2 or 3 watt device, gets slightly warm. The current consumption is more than 600 milliamps, which might make some USB ports switch off, but maybe too late. So let's do the mathematics. 100 microsecond pulse every 2 milliseconds over a 50 millisecond period means 25 pulses per burst. A burst is followed by 50 milliseconds recovery time, so we get 25 pulses every 100 milliseconds. This corresponds to 250 pulses per second. I measure 250 volts over a 1 kilo ohm load, so the resistor dissipates 62.5 watts during a single 100 microsecond pulse. This is equivalent to 6.25 millijoule per pulse. As we get 250 pulses per second, the power injected in the load resistor is 1.5625 joule, or if you prefer 1.5625 watts per second. From this experiment we found a way to detect USB killer sticks, at least this one, as it starts making a ticking noise when it is loaded with a resistor. You can hear the transformer of the boost converter inside the stick. Since the output voltage is almost 250 volts, I tried connecting it to a 40 watt 230 volt AC LED light bulb. This results in a dimly flashing light bulb, which is uh, rather impressive. The 250 volt signal is the same on both data pins, which suggests that they are simply shorted inside the stick. An ohmmeter indeed shows almost zero ohms between these pins. On a normal unpowered USB stick, this resistance is very high. 
This allowed me to make this simple tester. When the LED goes off, the stick is either a killer stick or a broken stick. In either case, uh, you should throw it away. I first tried this even simpler tester, but it didn't work as normal USB sticks draw current in this setting, so they make the LED switch on too. Now just for the sake of it, let's try the USB killer stick with a real computer and see what happens. For this I use this old laptop computer with Windows Vista on it. Now sometimes old equipment is stronger than new, sometimes it isn't, so this test doesn't translate one on one to a modern computer, tablet, phone or USB hub. I'll leave testing that up to you. This uh, computer has four USB ports uh, that were all in working order before this test. Plugging in the USB killer stick doesn't seem to do anything at first, but then suddenly the computer shuts down. Trying to switch on the computer after removing the killer stick does not work. The computer has passed away. Now that we know what comes out of the USB killer stick, uh, let's have a look at what is inside. Opening it is uh, easy. Inside is a little board with components on both sides. On one side are four capacitors and a little transformer. On the other side are a few ICs and passive components. The markings on the parts have been erased. Printed on the board is the text USB Killer V3.0 FK, 250 volts DC pulse, high voltage. Since the circuit didn't seem very complex, I tried to draw it schematic. The fact that the markings on the parts have been erased made this a bit complicated, but with the help of internet I think I made it quite far. I found some discussion about the board in a forum and there it was suggested that IC1 could be an 80Tiny4 TS, a 6 pin device that fitted the signals and so I used that. Why PB2 is connected to the power supply is however unclear. Maybe it's an enable input. What it is exactly doesn't really matter, it is a device that produces bursts of 100 microsecond pulses. Probably any microcontroller can do that. Identifying IC2 uh, proved to be more difficult. It was suggested that it might be a Xenon flashbulb boost converter IC, but I couldn't find one that matched the footprint. However, I did find the CAT4240 6 watt LED boost driver from On Semiconductor that looked like a good fit. Its datasheet has a typical application circuit that closely resembles the USB killer circuit. The USB killer has the LEDs replaced by a resistor and the inductor by a transformer. I don't think it is really a CAT4240 as it has a fixed switching frequency of 1 MHz, while I measured a lower frequency on the USB killer. The CAT4240 is part of a larger family, but they all seem to be fixed frequency devices. But I'm pretty sure that IC2 is a similar device. The curious thing here are the two resistors in parallel, R4 and R5, probably to make a non-standard value. I measured it as 22.9 kilo ohms. This value exists in the E192 range, but it might be hard to get or too expensive. I measured R3 as 477 kilo ohms, which corresponds to a 475 kilo ohms 1% E96 resistor. T1 is another complicated part. Its footprint corresponds to certain N MOSFET transistors. Vichier, for instance, has some, but they are not high voltage types. Also, I didn't measure a body diet, so I looked for an IGBT. This is where websites like Mauser and DigiKey come in handy as they let you filter on packages. This way I found the Sanyo TIG052TS N channel IGBT flashbulb switch that fits the footprint exactly. There are probably others, but uh, this is good enough. The transformer brand to Tokyo Coil Engineering was suggested in the forum discussing the USB killer. And indeed I found a device with the same dimensions and DC resistance values that matched what I had measured. D2 appears to be two diodes in series in one package. C6 and R2 are not mounted. So when T1 is not conducting, IC2 charges the capacitor bank. Because the HV plus side is disconnected by T1, the charge doesn't flow into the output. When IC1 switches on T1, HV plus is connected to ground and HV minus is pushed way below ground. This makes the capacitors discharge into the USB data lines. And then it starts all over again. So what did we learn from this? Never trust a USB stick. If the USB stick you just plugged into your computer makes a ticking noise, pull it out immediately. 
As USB ports are precious, I highly recommend to never stick a pen drive into the computer directly, but always use a USB hub. You have been warned.